In the sci-fi world of the Creator, Earth has been divided into two, the grand military power of the West and the underdog collective of humans and robots of the East. And when an ex-soldier called Joshua finds a new world-threatening robot weapon that turns out to be a real robot girl, he must go on a dangerous journey with her to find her creator to find his wife in a movie called Neil Blomkamp's Last of Us. I mean, Neil Blomkamp's Logan. I mean, the creator, not Neil Blomkamp's. Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! Although it may surprise you, The Creator is one of my favorite theater experiences of the year, simply because I'm a sucker for visuals. And this movie packs some pretty kick-ass visuals. It costs a fraction of the usual Hollywood blockbusters, yet it puts them all to shame. I'll take real beaches and rice fields over a green screen room every time. And on top of the visuals, I also really like a lot of the elements here, because even though this is sci-fi, it's close enough to reality to hit home. Yes, it's a war between humans and robots, but the power dynamics of the war are so familiar that you can find them throughout history and even right now, today. Yes, it's an untouchable space station in orbit, but it's basically the AC-130. It's all heightened, yet grounded. Very effective. Unfortunately, with most general audiences, stuff like visuals isn't enough alone to pull them in. They don't care if it's the biggest cinematic release of the year. They'll watch it on their phone. They don't care if it's the AC-130 or whatever fantasy BS that a Marvel executive pulled out of his ass. Nice. The most important piece of any movie is what is done with all that stuff. The narrative. And that's where the creator drops the ball big time, which caused it to flop big time. In fact, the narrative ball is dropped so badly here that there's been conspiracy theories that the movie was written by an actual AI to make it meta. I don't know if that's true, but it doesn't really matter, because my point here is that the movie has been written as if by an AI. That's what modern Hollywood has started to turn into. That's how most massive movies nowadays are written, as if it's all AI. And what does that mean exactly? Well, basically this. AI cannot create, only replicate. AI cannot play, only follow perimeters. And AI cannot think emotionally. That's the issue with a lot of blockbusters today, and it's why the creator failed to make an impact. So, let's dig into that. The first AI writing problem here is that this isn't a story so much as it is a combination of pre-existing story pieces assembled as they are. Basically, the story is this. An ex-soldier called Joshua used to be undercover in the East on a mission of finding and eliminating the creator of the robot technology, which went badly wrong and made him lose the woman he had fallen in love with and made pregnant, the creator's daughter. Oh. And so, because of this traumatic past, Joshua now lives in the West as an empty husk with no meaning to his life. He spends his days going to his crappy job of cleaning up after the nuclear bomb that began the war a decade ago, after which he goes home basically just to sulk. In other words, he's like the most traditional sad injured ex-soldier ruined by trauma in a post-apocalyptic setting you can find. But when Joshua then agrees to go on a new mission for personal gain, he stumbles upon this special robot girl. A girl everybody wants because she holds the key to the salvation of this messed up world. It's developed a super weapon designed to destroy nomads. A girl that at first he doesn't care about and is pretty mean to because he's a scarred ex-soldier. Tell him to get his crowbar ready, pry it open, get the information that way. You want that? Shut up, shut up, shut the f*** up! A girl that initially doesn't speak until then, of course, she does. You can talk? Uh, whoops, uh, sorry, wrong one. So you speak English now? 
But then, as Joshua's trip with the girl advances, he begins to realize that maybe the sides of the conflict aren't as they seemed. Maybe the side that storms into a laboratory to kill a bunch of scientists isn't the good side. Maybe the side that dominates the war's power dynamic is actually the bad side, and the resilient underdog side the good side. Whoa! You mean that the initial ally side with all the resources turns out to be the ultimate antagonist? That's crazy! Whoops, uh, wrong one again. I mean him, but uh, here. You are a selfish son of a bitch, Taylor. I ought to put a hole in you right now. And when the journey nears its end, Joshua learns that the personal goal he was seeking isn't the ultimate answer. Instead, he finds new meaning in the girl. Meaning that now that the girl has been successfully delivered, as was the initial intention, Joshua throws everything away to rescue her. The trip wasn't about the destination, but more so, the journey. <laughs> Oops, uh, no, not that one. How to do it? Do it! And in case you need me to spell it out for you, you've seen all of these story parts exactly as is a hundred times before. Whether in a video game, or a comic book movie, or a Tom Cruise movie, or just a movie. Because that's what AI does. It cannot create a story. It can only identify parts of existing stories and assemble them. That's the issue with the creator. You don't need to watch it to have watched it. To be clear, I'm not saying you can't draw from other stories, because all stories already exist. When humans write movies, we write through inspiration gotten from watching other movies. Just like AI, we replicate. Yes, but my point is that you can't just assemble pre-existing pieces as they are. You need to create new pieces from your personal experiences with those pieces. You can use the piece of two different worlds at war, but not the exact same one. You can use the pieces of going on a journey with a special child, but not as is. You know, the hopeless scarred ex-soldier hero that initially is mean to the child. The powerful faction that only cares about the child and not in any way the hero. The ending where the child turns out to be the answer to the hero's problems. Uh, oh my god, even though she's not the hero's daughter, she still kinda is. No one has ever done that! No one has ever done that! In other words, you cannot write analytically. You cannot identify story beats and scenes from your favorite movies and insert them into yours. A scene where the hero wakes up from a flashback nightmare to his alarm clock X years later. A scene where the hero says no to a task offered to him and then immediately says yes when he sees something enticing because that's what happens in movies. A scene where the non-speaking child suddenly speaks. You can structure from existing pieces, you can draw inspiration from existing pieces, but you must create pieces of your own. Different relationships, dynamics, paths, destinations, everything. That's the difference between human writing and AI writing. Overall, as frightening as it is, there is no magic program that gives you a great script from other great scripts. The best any program can do is give you the information required to create your script with. And that's Skillshare, an online learning community where you can find thousands of educational classes on everything from filmmaking to content production to web design and marketing and whatever. If you want to write a movie, there are professional screenwriters teaching you all you need to know from the basics to more advanced stuff. If you want to edit content, there are pros showing you how to master your editing software of choice. If you want to be a graphic designer, Skillshare has curated a learning path of various courses to get you going. How did you know how to put this all together. Whatever your passion, the point is that you must be the creator of your own thing. There is no shortcut. Luckily, Skillshare is offering a free one-month trial to the first 500 people or robots who click the link below. So if you watch my content to learn stuff about movies, for example, I highly recommend it. Skillshare is what taught me editing, so it worked for me. The second AI writing issue here is that even though there are amazing elements, they're not played with enough to generate value beyond the value of the element itself. 
For example, look at the most kick-ass element of the movie and the biggest reason to see the movie. The Nomad, a US military station hovering in orbit like a heightened version of the AC-130. The Nomad is awesome, arguably my favorite individual cinematic element of the year. When this thing shows up to project the targeting light and make that massive sound, you know sh** is about to go down. Literally. But as awesome as the Nomad is on its own, the issue is that the movie doesn't use it beyond its face value. It doesn't build sequences with it that would compel the audience to come see it. Mostly, what you see is what you get. The Nomad shows up, everybody freaks out, and then we watch from a distance as it makes a big boom. And to give you some context for what I'm getting at, there's a level in the new Modern Warfare 2 game built from what the AC-130 is. Basically, you're up in the warship and you need to sweep this enemy camp to help your squad on the ground extract a villain. We'll secure the area so you can move in. Stand by. And while the AC-130 has been playable before, the way it's used here to build a truly immersive experience where you feel like God playing with ants it's astounding, worth playing the game just for this. Ghost, copy that. I need you out of the building. Move north right now. Copy, moving. Drop that building. That's what this movie needed as well. Not just to feature the Nomad in sequences, but to build incredible sequences from the Nomad. Maybe it's a sequence where the hero is up in the Nomad to watch it being operated. Maybe it's a sequence where the hero is on the ground storming an enemy camp while getting real-time intel and air support from the Nomad so that he can keep advancing. Or maybe it's a sequence of the hero having to survive the Nomad while it's trying to locate him and blow him up. Just something more than only the element itself. Because this is a major problem here. The value of most elements is limited to the elements themselves. The hero has a robotic arm, which he does nothing with outside of using it as a normal arm. There's a bunch of sci-fi action shooting scenes, but they're often basic action shooting scenes with sci-fi skins and nothing to really mix up dynamics, with some exceptions that I'll give props for soon. There's the war between humans in the west and the robots in the east without any proper showcase of it. The movie just kind of verbally invents it and therefore it's a big deal. If they get this Alpha O weapon online and destroy Nomad, they win. Nice argument. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. There's a very cool idea where a person's consciousness can be momentarily uploaded to a robot body, yet all that's used for is to deliver in information with some emotion at the end. Please? What the hell? Shipley, where's the weapon? You're already dead. I'm sorry, son. Truly. But there is no time. Was the weapon terminated? Which isn't enough. This element alone won't get the audience to show up. To pull that off, you gotta play with it to build something truly fresh and special, which AI cannot do because it doesn't have imagination. For instance, what if there's a really tough human villain that the hero kills by sheer luck and then that villain comes back for revenge in a robot body? A scene of the hero being hunted by a pissed off dead man who wants nothing else than to return the favor before his timer runs out. I don't know if that's the answer here, but the point is to play with elements to build sequences rather than just to feature elements in sequences. Because even though there is some of that here, which is really great, it's not enough. Audiences don't show up because the heroes go into a dream. They show up to see what is done with the fact that it's a dream. whole, it doesn't matter what you have so much as it matters how you use it. That's what she said. <laughs> the robot girl is implied to be the most important thing ever created that can one day control all technology. Everyone who looks at her gasps in shock. That's the most advanced sim I've ever seen in my life. This kid's different, man. She can grow. Yet all she actually does, all that her specialty is used for, well... She turns on a TV, she turns off the lights, she stops a running robobomb, she disables the Nomad's weapon system. In other words, most of what she does could have been done by a remote. And that doesn't compel audiences to show up, because they have remotes at home. Maybe not as cool remotes, but remotes with mostly the same function, 
nonetheless. The third AI writing problem here is that characters and events are treated as analytical equations instead of emotionally, which makes them feel less. Like I mentioned before, the hero is defined by his trauma of betraying his wife and getting her killed five years ago, which has left him living a meaningless life as a hollow husk. His days consist of going to a crappy job and coming home to sulk alone, without aspirations or hopes or anything. And logically, it makes sense. The trauma and the result are consistent. The issue, however, is that it's tough for the audience to care about an empty husk. We don't care about the hero because there's nothing there to care about. I don't give a shit about becoming extinct. He's just a fake feeling dude fully defined by this event, which isn't the first time for this actor. Shots fired! Shots fired! Whereas real people, we're not really like that. We're not logical or binary. Trauma is never all there is. We might feel terrible because of something and then suddenly forget all about it for a while because of other enjoyments or responsibilities. Like, it's near impossible for a person to be nothing. That's not really a thing unless you view things as equations like AI. To give a simpler example of what I mean, look at the scene that happens after Joshua begins his journey with the girl. Essentially, their car has broken down, so they get a lift from some nice locals to get to the next town, until they're stopped at a checkpoint by police looking for a western fugitive moving with a robot girl. And as the police begin to suspect something, this happens. Although this should be an exhilarating scene, it doesn't really feel so because it's not right. See, what we have here is a group of human police officers right away opening fire on a car full of children. Which makes perfect sense logically because the car is a threat, the police must shoot it to stop it. But it doesn't really make sense emotionally. To think that all cops, normal people, are able to just immediately st start blasting at a car of kids with a bunch of civilians around Around, no problem, it just feels off. You know, the scene doesn't feel like anything because what it feels like isn't right. Anyway, I started blasting. Bang, bang. No, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang, try to shoot him in I don't know if I'm making sense here because it is a weird subject and probably why AI will never be able to master it. But what I mean is that things here don't work because they are logical mostly in numbers, which real life isn't. The relationship between Joshua and the girl, it also feels off. Basically, Joshua breaks into the creator's lab and finds the weapon, which turns out to be a real robot child, and then they go their separate ways. And when Joshua wakes up the next morning, the girl has found him and starts following him around like a puppy. Which makes sense because kids are curious, they don't fully comprehend danger yet, and because Joshua's face is the only one she recognizes. But the reason this friendly bond feels off is because what's heavily implied is that this girl has grown up in a confinement of propaganda. She has never left her lair, and all her knowledge of the West comes from messaging of how oppressive it is and how important it is for robots to be free. What do you want, sweetie? For robots to be free. How about ice cream? And so, to see her instantly imprint on and trust an a-hole western soldier more than the type of faces she has grown up around, it makes sense, but it just doesn't feel right. In World War II, some Japanese mothers would toss their babies off a cliff because they genuinely thought it's better than to surrender to the Americans. That makes no logical sense because a mother would protect her child to the very end, but somehow the illogicality makes it feel vividly real. I guess what I'm getting at is this. The issue with analytical writing is that making sense is never as important as feeling right. Here, for example, the purpose of Joshua's journey is to find his wife to fix what he broke, and then he kinda never does. I won't say the ending is bad or even spoil it because you should see the movie, but a lot of audiences won't find it very rewarding in terms of what was promised. As a very universal example that everyone has context for, it's a bit like how Ryan Johnson wrote most of The Last Jedi analytically. Oh, what's the toughest possible answer for this character to hear, for Rey to hear about her parents? 
Well? They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. It will just make things hardest for her because she's the hero and that's her job is for things to be hard for her. His answer is technically correct, but for many audiences, it just didn't feel so. As a whole, my point is that as a filmmaker, it's impossible to objectively know if what you're making is good. You cannot know how audiences will feel. All you can do is consider how you feel and then decide whether it's the feeling you want, which AI will never be able to do. That's the heart of the creator's problems, with emotion, with elements, with story. It's one big equation of numbers.